Welcome back uh, to this 34th lecture now, uh, which we will continue our discussion on what we have been discussing for the last two lectures. And we started this in the context of understanding spontaneous instability in ultra thin films. And what we realize there that the situation becomes completely different for a film if it is thinner than let us say around 100 nanometer or a thickness critical thickness below which there is active interfacial interaction between its two interfaces due to van der Waals interaction. Okay. And therefore, we decided to look in more detail into the expression for van der Waals interaction. What we have done so far, we will do a quick recapitulation of that. We have looked into started by looking at the normal 6 to 12 potential, the attractive part of the 6 to 12 potential that is the pure van der Waals attraction between two molecules let us say, which has a scaling of x to the power minus 6. We considered or we decided to look into the interaction between thin two thin blocks of materials 1 and material 2 of thicknesses d 1 and d 2, which are separated by a separation distance of d. Right? Uh, <coughs> and what did we consider? We considered one molecule of 1 and one specific molecule of 2 and we simply started off by looking at the potential energy of interaction between these two molecules is known to us. Therefore, based on that and that is this, based on that what we tried to do was based on the assumption of additive interaction that we decided to figure out the total energy of interaction of this particular molecule of 2 with all molecules of 1 and for that we actually chose a geometry an infinitesimal element which is a ring like element. Uh, I have discussed it adequately. Therefore, we f first figured out what is the number of molecules present number of molecules of body of material 1 within this ring and then we looked into the total interaction of this molecule with all the molecules within the ring and uh, the expressions are here. Then we decided to integrate this expression suitably under appropriate geometry and the limits are the way the construction was taken for d zeta varies between 0 and d 1 and y varies between 0 to infinity to essentially find out the interaction of one molecule of material 2 with all molecules of the block or the strip 1. After we did that, we numerically did the expression and we obtained an expression for this which is something like this. Then what we did was we looked into the, we looked into a strip of material 2 over here figure out the total number of molecules present in the strip per unit area, multiplied the expression we have got by that and then integrated this from z varying to d to z varying to d plus d 2 and finally, the expression we got is the expression for interaction van der Waals interaction, the free energy of van der Waals interaction or free energy of interaction of two blocks of thickness says d 1 and d 2 separate, separated by f separated by a distance d. The interaction, the nature of interaction is of course, purely van der Waals. And then what we did was we looked into certain limiting cases. For example, uh, if we look at the interaction between two semi infinite blocks, we find that g l w is given by this particular expression. We also made an assumption that uh, at contact d is not going to be 0, because our uh, the expression we have considered does not go down to 0. So, there is going to be an equilibrium separation distance d 0 and based on that one can calculate the delta g l w, which is like when the two surfaces are infinitely apart versus they are brought in contact and one gets an expression like this. However, from even more simpler understanding one can get an expression of delta g l w which is like this and then one can equate these two to get a very interesting expression of Hamarkar constant which only which contains the surface and interfacial energy components van der Waals components of the surface and interfacial energies of the two materials and d 0. 
Uh, one can now do a clever twisting and one can simply assume the two materials to be made of the same thing and then one can obtain an expression for A11 also. I think the discussion up to this point is pretty simple excepting I mean if you take some time to look into the uh, expression and the derivation. What we have done beyond this point is essentially to identify. So, what, what did we understand? We understood that if we have two blocks let us say, uh, let us just else I will draw a figure again. So, what we understood was okay, it is better to draw a figure sorry I should have drawn it before that if you have two blocks which are close by right, uh, then there is some interaction right. There is some free energy of interaction. I will probably do a better job by writing the whole expression again. If you see several things, if you see that d is very high, v, d is very large, the two blocks are very far away, then d tending to infinity irrespective of whether individual blocks are thick or thin, uh, one sees g l w tends to 0. Right? So, when the two interfaces are close to each other, then only there is some interaction, but then we also see that there will be some additional terms if d 1 and d 2 are thin. If d 1 and d 2 are also very thick, then uh, there is no interaction. So, all that is fine, but what we realize that when we talked about the derivation of this interaction which is absolutely fine or up to this point, we have not considered any self interaction of the molecules right, because we have considered van der Waals interaction. So, we know that van der Waals interaction is omnipresent and based on that logic we have considered interaction eventually of all molecules of 2 with all molecules of 1 which is also fine, but what about the self interaction of the molecules. So, we decided to look into that in a bit abstract way. So, what we did was we took a strip of it and placed it back on the substrate and that gives us this expression from which we obtained that G L W of the film, the free energy of the film in fact is negative of the free energy at the interface. And for a system like this, one can always find the uh, interfacial energy of interaction based on this expression and for from that one gets an expression for the free energy of a film of a thin film. Of course, the free energy if you look at the full expression of a thin e free energy of a film, this particular case in fact, the film behaves like a soap film. Therefore, one finds 2 gamma 1 which corresponds to the energy at the two surfaces and uh, it is my uh, it has an additional term and you see that the free energy of the film in fact, becomes 2 gamma 1 if h is large. So, if h is thick of course, you have a film and simply the energy interfacial energy is the two surface energies, but if the film is thin enough if h is low then there is in fact, one can the easiest way to understand is there is interfacial interaction due to van der Waals forces and that leads to this excess free energy. So, one can in fact, use this concept to look into a very practical situation not an abstract situation anymore that you have a film coated on a substrate. So, all we did was to look into the G L W of the system and we understand that it has in fact, three terms G L W of the film, G L W of the substrate and the interfacial interaction again. So, film is easy now, we have this expression already uh, 2 gamma 1 minus a 1 1 divided by 12 pi h square. I have decided to write a constant c 1 because 2 gamma 1 is constant, it does not vary with h. So, here the film is represented as 2. So, it is c 1 minus a 2 2 divided by 12 pi h square. Substrate similarly is a c 2 or if you want to match with 2 and 1, you can change this also no problem. C 1 minus a 1 1 divided by 12 pi d 1 square, which is fine. In fact, only cases we, we know 
that often the substrates are semi infinite, it is very very thick. In that case, this particular term numerically tends to 0 and the interfacial interaction. What has been done? You simply draw this picture. So, G L W interface you have as minus a 1 2 divided by 12 pi. Please pardon me for writing it again and again and again, but I am sure some of your friends will be benefited uh, from this repetition uh, d plus d 1 whole square minus d divided by d plus d 2 whole square. Now, you see for yourself what are the terms that remain in this term. See you uh, all I have done is to rotate this figure by uh, sort of anti clockwise by 90 degrees. So, you find your d 2 is equal to h you can always you are more than welcome to write it like this d is equal to d 0 and d 1 is equal to d 1 is equal to infinity. right? So, the moment d 1 tends to infinity what happens is uh, this term goes to inf 0 and this term also goes to 0. Now, you are left with these two terms here you see d 2 is h. So, that is fine uh, and d plus d 2 uh, sorry this is d square sorry this is not d 2 this is d square. So, d square is d 0 square and this is d plus d 2. So, that is h plus d 0 all we are saying is h plus d 0 is approximately equal to h. right? So, that in fact gives us and it turns out that you have a constant term here you have a constant term. So, if you are looking at the free energy of the system of course, you need to evaluate the constants correctly, but that is not exactly our intention. So, and this also is another constant. So, everything gets augmented as an effective constant and then you are left with this term. So, you are you get minus a 2 2 divided by 12 pi h square plus a 1 2 divided by 12 pi h square just use this assumption. So, you get an effective Hamarkar constant which is this depending on the complexity of the system the expression for the effective Hamarkar constant goes on changing. At this point, so what we have we have now found out or expressed the excess free energy of a thin film. So, this excess energy is arising because of the slenderness of the film that is it is very very thin. So, G L W excess is G L W of the system for h equal to h when the film is thin minus G L W of the system when h is very thick that is h tending to infinity and it turns out that G L W excess is a e divided by my minus a e divided by 12 pi h square. At this point we define another term interface effective potential this is a very important term which uh, is uh, how the excess free energy of the system changes how the excess free energy of the system changes with the film thickness and its expression is a e divided by 6 pi h cube. Okay. So, with this now we proceed a bit further in fact uh, what we mentioned earlier the disjoining pressure is nothing but negative of this effective interface potential. So, this is in fact I will write very carefully L w component of excess free energy of a system how it varies with h negative of that is known as the disjoining pressure. And therefore, its term its expression is going to be minus a e divided by 6 pi h cube. Uh, effective interface potential sometimes is also represented as conjoining pressure. That is interesting in fact, negative of disjoining pressure <laughs> has a different name it is in fact conjoining pressure. Okay. So, fine. Uh, now, what we do we would like to correlate the film instability to this so called uh, uh, disjoining pressure or sign of disjoining pressure. Uh, we can do it in several ways one of the thing we can do is to look into the effective Hamarkar constant itself. So, A e as we have already seen A e turns out to be A 2 2 minus A 1 2 and I would like to draw your attention that some some slides back we have derived that A 2 2 is equal to uh, 24 pi d 0 square gamma 2 L w. We did not derive it for A 2 2 we derived it for A 1 1, but which is absolutely fine and uh, A 1 2 turns out to be uh, 24 pi 
d0 square under root gamma 1 l w into gamma 2 l w is based on the fact that I told and this is something I decided not to do it is very simple is this. So, what we have is a e turns out to be 12 pi d 0 square to 2 gamma 2 l w minus 2 under root gamma 1 l w gamma 2 l w right. And uh, what we do is we split up we sort of add and subtract a gamma 1 into the parenthesis. So, we split up this there is a bit of gimmickry we do algebraic gimmickry. So, this 2 gamma 2 l w we split up as gamma 2 plus gamma 2 all l w's plus gamma 1 minus gamma 1 so, that is what you do. And if you do that you are left with 12 pi d 0 square And this turns out to be uh, this particular term is easy. Does it remind you of anything? Considering the fact that this particular term is gamma 1 to L w. So, I will uh, write it here. And what is it? It is nothing but you should remember this now s 2 1 l w spreading coefficient right. Therefore, based on this way you can get a e is minus 12 pi d 0 square s 2 1 l w. Okay. So, this is in fact easy again you do just do it yourself and you can get to these expressions. It is easy now you can now correlate film stability in terms of uh, you just write this as 1 and uh, this as 2 instead of s and l what we have been writing and the expression of s 2 1 turns out to be gamma 1 minus gamma 1 2 plus gamma 2 that is all. And we know that film is stable if s 2 1 is positive that means that a e is negative is a necessary condition uh, for the film stability right uh, okay negative means film is stable okay now uh, one can look into it from a slightly different uh, perspective also. Uh, it is a bit qualitative, but it is very fascinating in fact uh, from the standpoint of this oscillation. Uh, because if you correlate it back we started to do all this and we argued that there is oscillation and the film becomes unstable. These oscillations are attributed oscillations at the free surface of the film. These oscillations are attributed to the internal kinetic energy of the molecules. Typically, as soon as the surface oscillates, it gives rise to Laplace pressure and surface tension tries to flatten out. But in case the film thickness is small, that is, there is 
one can now understand very clearly there is excess free energy of interaction. What happens is there might be, so if the van der Waals interaction is attractive, then these oscillations have a reason now to grow right and therefore, there is a competition between the destabilizing van der Waals forces and the stabilizing Laplace pressure. Now, let us examine under what condition this can happen. Now, for a film to become unstable, uh, this is a very critical and delicate concept. It is uh, necessary that the oscillation grows and simultaneously the free energy also reduces. Because please do not forget we are talking about a spontaneous instability. So, until and unless the free energy reduces it will not evolve in that particular direction. Okay. So, in that case reduction of H is like this you are looking at an unstable film. So, over these areas H is in fact reducing initially the thickness was H 1 at this area at time T 1 time T 2 thickness is H 2. So, in case reduction of H, so delta H is negative should also lead to reduction of delta G that is delta G is also negative that is the final minus the initial configuration. Okay. So, for this to happen you see look at the expression for this to happen delta H has become negative, I will write it down the effective interface potential for this to happen phi L w has to be positive. Okay. Okay. So, it turns out okay. So, uh, if delta H is negative and delta G is also negative, then phi L w, which has an expression of A e divided by 6 pi h cube has to be positive and uh, this is the necessary condition for the film instability. I must write has to be positive right and this is the necessary condition for film instability instability here we talked about the condition for stability so please do not confuse that okay so this is the condition for instability now you see this term phi 6 pi h cube is always positive so 
only way phi L w can be positive is when A e is positive. And that is exactly what we have told that A e negative is the condition for a stable film and here we get qualitatively that A e positive is the condition for an unstable film. Uh, similarly, one can argue. So, in other words uh, one must have negative disjoining pressure to trigger film instability. Okay. Uh, a positive disjoining pressure implies a negative effective interface potential. and that leads to a stable film. Okay. So, now I hope you have a clearer picture of when a film can be stable or under what condition the film can become unstable. In fact, I posed a question that a stable film even when the film is thin in fact, these areas the interaction the net interaction is repulsive that is why not only Laplace pressure stabilizes the film, but also the positive disjoining pressure or the negative conjoining pressure also stabilizes the film. How is it possible? It sort of implies that the effective Van der Waals interaction between the two interfaces is repulsive. Apparently, Van der Waals interaction what we consider is always attractive. So, so how is it possible? And it turns out that it is not the individual Van der Waals interaction that matters, it is the effective Hamaker constant that matters. And therefore, the relative magnitudes of A22 and A12 uh, plays an important role, depending on which it can be possible to have an effective, uh, attractive, or a repulsive Van der Waals interfacial interaction, which is the key factor that governs the stability of the film. There is a bit of uh, more one can go into with the theoretical detail with the linear stability analysis, but that is something I will not do to avoid complication in this course. And next uh, chapter, uh, next lecture we will go back to some qualitative discussion, but on a more complicated system that is on the debating not of a single layer. We will talk about certain aspects of debating again to get back our uh, uh, groove into the experimental studies and qualitative studies which we are doing, but we will also look into the debating uh, of a bilayer. Thank you.